it still sparked a lot of controversy. A lot of people didn't see me as such, but it also made me even stronger, lit a fire under me to let people know that I'm here, I'm queer, and I am not going nowhere. Hey, what's up you guys? It's Michaela J here, and I'm just gonna look back on some of the biggest moments that really shaped my identity, and most importantly, my career. Ready to go? How does this thing work? Oh, y'all pulled this out of the woodworks. 2011's Rent Production Angel. Oh, y'all really brought this back. This is like nostalgic. That was like the precipice of me like budding into the flower that I wanted to become. That was the time where I could really let who I was out all on the stage. When, you know, people come backstage to talk to me, they would always see Angel as this, you know, strong character, but they would always say she. And I was like, yeah. Exactly. And for anyone who doesn't know who Angel Dumont Chouinard is, I see her as like a trans woman who was a part of the life in the 1990s. She was someone who was a fighter. She contracted HIV. And I feel like it had an, a, a strong impact on the characters of that show. So that's who Angel Dumont Chouinard is. And if you don't know who she is, you better ask somebody. Okay. This feels like, um, we go deep. Hello, you must be Lona. Excuse me while I bow in thanks because yes, I must be Lana. This was a character I played. Her name was Lana Zuckerberg or something like that. And she was a little con artist, you know, but she was also somebody who was really trying to make her way as a trans woman in the space. There really weren't any like guest starring trans roles out there. And this was the first like really strong, poignant character on a television series that was really popular. And not to mention, they wrote it in for me. So I was very, very, very thankful for that. In a time where I thought people didn't see me, this was the moment where people saw me, Lisa, Richard, and Liz, the producers of the show. I remember going up to them and saying, this is really hard for me. And I remember, I think Liz hugged me and she said, just be yourself. I see who you are. Oh, hey, Ebony girl. Okay, so this is my ish right here, Saturday Church. This is my first feature film. I played a character named Ebony who was almost like kind of like a house mother. The movie is about this young boy named Ulysses. He's trying to find himself and he's trying to find outlets for the LGBTQI community to accept him in. And he goes and finds this place called Saturday Church, which was a real place in New York City. It was on Christopher Street. And a lot of LGBTQI members would go there to just find solace and find space when their parents would displace them. It definitely was the biggest role I had. This was a supporting character. Many of the other characters I had played were guest roles, right? But this was a supporting character and that has a lot of weight in the industry. Little sneak peek and like a little secret. This is how me and my girl, my sister, India Moore met. Hey sis, I love you. Thank you. Hey sis. Y'all gonna make me cry with this one. What's your name? Damon. A pleasure, I'm Blanca. This was the role that changed my life forever. I feel like if I go any further, I will start bawling tears, but this character was an essential, inspirational, uplifting and monumental character for me. I put a lot of my mother into her. I put a lot of me into her. And I also put a lot of my sisters, who are my ancestors of the ballroom scene, into her. Pose totally changed the media landscape for all trans women around the world. I mean, in so many ways, people got to see that we weren't just one dimensional human beings. They got to see different aspects of trans women. They didn't get to see just one. They got to see the scope of five women of all different backgrounds, all different walks of life. I, I was sitting in front of my television screen, no, my computer screen, listening to Rihanna's Wild Thoughts. And I get a call from Ryan Murphy. At that time, I didn't know who was calling my phone. I was like, who's this? It's the LA number. I remember him telling me, you have nothing to worry about. You got the part. And yeah, just don't worry. This is yours, this is your part. And I remember screaming and running downstairs and crying to my mother and my second dad and my whole family, my uncle. I lived with everybody in my house. It was like seven people in the house, including my best friend. And it was the best moment because my family just rallied around me. And then I found out that I was number one on that show. And honey, it just changed the whole landscape of everything. I don't know where that country accent came from. Ryan Murphy, you are the Clive Davis to my Whitney Houston. Thank you for taking me out of Brick City, okay? And I still love Brick City. I'm power to North New Jersey. When is this next one going to be? Ciao. Hey, baby. That's my boyfriend. 
That's Stephen Gimliano, Stephen Richard Gimliano to be exact. So this was me telling the world I had a boyfriend that I had kept secret for basically half of the two years of my life. Everybody was like, you were trying to hide him from us? And I'm like, yes, child, because y'all want to be all up in my business and I just wanted to be me and him, okay? Like, y'all don't need to know about that. And then I was like, you know what? I mean, people do need to see love on a trans woman. They need to see that. They need to see how love, what love is and how um, it expands beyond gender, race, anything. That's my man and I love him and I'm gonna stick beside him. We're gonna go back. Hey Carolina, okay, so this was one of my favorite moments in my life because it just was a full circle moment. This was a movie about Jonathan Larson. It's called Tick, Tick, Boom. It was a musical. And I got to pay Caroline, who was one of his friends. I was in Brent in 2011. I had worked on a show that was written by Jonathan Larson. I had worked with every single person in the 1994 production of Brent. And then just to do a movie 10, maybe even 11 years later, it's just, it goes to show how it's divine intervention. Full circle moment. Loved working with Mr. Andrew Garfield too. Yes. Yes. I'll never forget this moment. This was the moment I got my Emmy nomination. That's my aunt in the back, by the way, y'all. And my mom. My mom swung me around like to the point where I was about to fall. And then she was like, I'm so sorry, I was just so happy. It was in a time where I was going through so much turmoil. I was at the Cannes Festival in the south of France. I also had lost my uncle at that time. I felt like my uncle really did me a service when he was like, I'm gonna leave here, but I'm gonna give you a little something. And I'm very thankful to him and the creator above for this moment. Yes, bye, da, 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 da. I'm so sorry, I'm so silly, y'all. This was one of my favorite moments in my life. The song is about, it was originally about, you know, love between two people. But when BLM happened and when Corona happened, me and the team were like, you know, this is a great time to release a song for everybody out there who has something to say and who wants to change the world with their actions and more than anything, their presence. The guy that we chose, his name is Ink Monster. And I just wanted somebody who looked like the guys that I knew when I was growing up. I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. I grew up in the hood. I grew up around men just like that. I also knew that there were men like that that knew how to show love to, to the girls. And I wanted that to be seen on the television screen. I had a list of men to look through. By the way, I love my boyfriend, but you know, men are fine. I have always seen myself as an artist. I've always seen myself as a, you know, you know, pop, R&B princess or whatever. I finally had gotten to live out my dream and work on my music and do a music video for the first time and also feel fabulous while doing so. I mean, Lord, Jesus. Okay, I'm done, I promise. Woman of the year. This was a life-changing moment for me, but it was a hard one too, because um, I got a lot of flack for being named one of the 12 women of the year. Even though I was the only trans woman on that list, it still sparked a lot of controversy. A lot of people didn't see me as such but it also made me even stronger, lit a fire under me to let people know that I'm here, I'm queer, and I am not going nowhere. And also I am a trans woman and I ain't going nowhere. My mama made me so, she told me so. Oh, naked bald mole rat. <laughs> no, this was a liberating moment for me. I shaved my hair off and I just held a lot in my hair as all women do. And also there's the stigma of when women shave their head, they're not desirable. They're not feminine enough. They're not all of the things. And I was like, I'm gonna break that down for all my trans women out there too, because a lot of trans women feel the same thing and probably even more pressure being that they're trans. So yeah, that meant a lot to me. What does it feel like to reflect on your career? I'm always reflecting on my career. And when I look back at those times, even when I first started in my career in Rent, I just have those surreal moments when I wake up and I'm like, is this my life? I'm a regular schmegular girl, born and raised in Newark, New Jersey hasn't changed a bit. You know, I think every single day when I wake up, I'm gonna always be that person to be like, wow, this is my life. What a responsibility and something that I have to upkeep. So yeah, it humbles me.